and welcome back from the mission story. Um, this week's test, can you read the memory text this week? I'll be week? glad to. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Let's pray. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for your creation. I know Creation Sabbath is coming up soon, Amen. but every Sabbath can be a Creation Sabbath. That's and right. we just praise you for creating us, for giving us our soul, and for being able to um, be present with you always. Amen. Guide and bless in our lesson study today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay. So, this week is understanding human nature. Mm -hmm. What is there to understand, Pastor Sam? Oh, there's a lot, <laughs> uh, because the Bible is very clear how God made man and woman, and how He gave us this beautiful gift called life. Mm, amen. And so we get to experience things, we get to see things, we get to think about things, and this is something that is unique about human beings we can actually you know share these experiences and and even with people who might come from a different country or culture we can still connect with them and share what we think what we see what we um, have experienced so to build up that whole understanding of human nature we kind of have to start at the very beginning. Correct. So, creation, here we go. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's look at Genesis 1, 24 through 27 first. Uh, because we're talking about um, all the firmament. We're talking about the creeping, crawling things being created. We're talking about the livestock, birds of the air, fish of the sea, and um, this is the part that kind of we want to differentiate because there's all the creepy crawly happy creatures and then there's humans. So Genesis starting in 24 says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. You want to read verse 26 and 27? Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Okay, so what are some similarities here between humans and animals? <laughs> they were both um, made out of the earth. Yeah. Yes. And there seems to be a couple of distinctions between them. There are. And one of them um, is breathing into man or humans, uh, into his nostrils, the breath of life, and man becomes a living being. Mm. And so he was like a physical entity before he became a living one. Mm. And he created both male and female in the image and likeness of the Godhead. So can we read Genesis 2-7 now? Yes, Genesis 2-7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. In some translations, a living soul. Okay, so there's this whole miracle that happens. Yes. Um, and if you think about it, it would have had to be completed in a day mm -hmm. <laughs> because right. um, everything else had been created in a day. But 
you think about how intricate I mean, so the human body is intricate, but also ecosystems are intricate. Mm -hmm. The trees, all the different varieties of trees, the flowers, all the different varieties of flowers. Um, Genesis 2.19 says, Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field, every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, mm -hmm. that was the name thereof. So... There's the other um, text in Psalms that mm -hmm. talks about um, God creating us in a fearful and wonderful way. Yes. Um, and we use that now, you know, <laughs> somebody gets pregnant, and then mm -hmm. uh, when we talk about that, fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, but when you have the soul and the breath of life gets taken away, mm -hmm then what happens? <laughs> That's a great question. So, so the Bible is very clear that we are a living soul. So this idea that something physical, like the body, was formed first. God comes, gives this life-giving um, element called the breath of life or nefesh. And then man becomes a living soul. And so, so the Bible tells us that yes, when mankind either does not have this breath of life or the body is destroyed, which could also happen, then he ceases to be. He is no longer this living soul. And it's interesting because later on we'll see in our lesson that Ezekiel talks about dead souls. And that might shock some, especially if they come from a Buddhist background, Hindu background, even a Protestant background. Um, they've fallen into the trap of Satan, thinking that mankind cannot cease to exist, that the soul is something that cannot be destroyed. Mm. But the Bible tells us it can. So, do we want to jump over to Ezekiel now? We can. Okay, Ezekiel 18.4 um, is a great element in helping us understand this um, human soul. Yeah. But it says, Behold, all souls are mine. Mm. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son mm -hmm. is mine. Mm -hmm. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Yes. Okay, so... Um, Really quickly, bumping back to um, Genesis. Yes. We have in Genesis 16, mm -hmm. uh, uh, sorry, 2, 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. You remember we, we kind of covered that. Yeah, we did. Um, in last week's lesson. Um, and it says, And the Lord commanded man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day you Eat this thereof, you shall surely die. die. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we had the serpent in 3, 4, Genesis 3, 4, that says, The serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. And then, um, mm -hmm. look at us now. Look at these trees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everything's dying right now. It's fall, which has been romanticized and beautified. And it is a beautiful process, but if you think about it, that leaf's not coming back. It's, mm -hmm. it's done. Uh, next year there will be a new leaf but and, and and we have these trees that you can also like just any time of the year you can chop down <laughs> like, like the this one right, right back behind here. us <laughs> I'll show you that yeah so there's this this tree and um, it, you know not all trees mm, survive and sometimes right. when they die you just have to cut them up so they don't become a hazard mm -hmm. so there <laughs> there's situations like that but uh, back to Ezekiel. Um, wait, hold on. Not Ezekiel. Yes, Ezekiel 18. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Ezekiel 18.20. Correct. Uh, so we read Ezekiel 18.4, but Ezekiel 18.20 now. The soul who sins shall die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. 
Now, mm -hmm. what's an interesting contrast is if you uh, also go to Matthew 10, okay. verse 28. This is another kind of aspect in understanding. Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, mm -hmm. but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. That's right. How do you explain this? That, that's a great question. That's a little more complicated. It's a it super is. short verse and mm -hmm. there's so much packed into it. So, so the, this idea of, of soul, <laughs> it's interesting because especially in the Greek, it's, it's a little more, uh, I think, it's easier to explain. Okay. And, and the word for soul here is the word psyche. Okay. Where we get our word for psychology. Okay. Our word for mind. Hmm. And, and, and that's something that's interesting about at least human beings. And I would say also even animals. They can think. Um, we reason differently than the animals, of course. We, we can distinguish between something that is good and something that is bad. We know animals can't distinguish by what is good or bad. But... God can and will destroy the wicked completely hmm. to the point that also there is no memory even of them. Wow. Okay? Um, when Jesus tells here, don't be afraid of the person who can just destroy the body. Okay? Um, God knows who we are. And even if we go back to dust, even if we are nowhere to be found, God knows who we are. And when he comes back again, when Jesus comes, he will raise that body up and that mind of ours will, will be there to remember, to know, to think, to experience what is happening at that moment. But God will destroy completely um, the body, the memory, the thoughts of the wicked. And, and that is something that is clear in the Bible, especially when we go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Hmm. When it talks about the dead, they know nothing. They have no feelings. They cannot experience anything. And, and maybe there's another way of putting it also. Um, we know of people who, for diverse circumstances of life, have ended up in a body that basically we could say has been destroyed. Hmm. Can't move, can't do anything with it. There's there, Some disability. and yet they can still think, and there they can still perceive. Yeah, they have they have some some illness that that just puts them in that situation, and 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 we could say, wow, that person's body was destroyed. Yet they can still reason. They can still do amazing things, yes, with, with that gift that God has given, with that psyche that God has given them. Ecclesiastes 3, 19 mm -hmm. and 20 says, For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts, even mm -hmm. one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Mm -hmm. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, mm -hmm. for all is vanity. Mm -hmm. All go into one place, all are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Mm -hmm. So dust to dust, ashes to ashes. So what I'm seeing here is if we pass away, we don't instantly go to heaven, we don't instantly go to hell. Mm -hmm. We're not dealing with St. Peter at the door. We're not. Um, That's right. Um, we basically go back to the earth. And it's interesting because even this, this word like hell, mm -hmm. in Latin it's been translated into inferno. Okay. Which can go back to this other word called inferior or something that is under. And that's exactly where we go. We go under the earth. Hmm. We go into the pit, um, is also used in the Old Testament. We go to Sheol, which is also another word for grave. So that's, that's where we end up when we die. And we do the same with animals. I don't know how many of you have had a pet. Um, you've had to bury that pet. 
Mm. And and it's it's a really difficult also I think that's one thing that situation at least me as a kid mm -hmm. helped me understand what that okay. was okay oh so that goldfish is not coming back it's not it, you mean it's over it's over and then you know then we had I don't know if we had to bury gerbils and you know whatever mm -hmm. else there was a couple dogs I think um, and there's a sense cat. of loss yeah deep sense of loss and you I mean years later you can miss him too mm -hmm. you know I think about my cat you know mm -hmm. I was like oh I see I see one with similar color patterns and I'm like oh that reminds me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I see another dog oh that reminds me of Thor or mm -hmm. Dutchie or whatever the uh, pets were um, Isaiah 40 okay one through eight um, it's a beautiful passage um, it kind of just talks about you know human nature as this fragile Mm -hmm. um, transitory kind of concept. Yes. Um, so part of this is part of the Messiah, but when if it, you you know the the works by Handel. Mm -hmm. But if we go down further, mm -hmm. starting in verse five, um, it says, "And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it." And this is transitioning from that first aspect to the second. And it says. And the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is as grass. Mm -hmm. All the goodliness thereof as the flower of the field. The grass withers, mm -hmm. the flower fadeth, because the spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is. Grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. And the flower fades. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. That's a promise. So, I mean... You can put all your investments, and you can do all these great things, but I, I, th I think of it as you are a sojourner, you're an alien, you're a pilgrim, you're an um, immigrant. Mm -hmm. we're, we're all immigrants here on this earth, mm -hmm. and um, we don't want to get all tied up in the politics of this world. That's right. We don't want to get tied up in the money of this world. Yeah, that's right. Um, all that's, I mean, even if the whole world was Christian, that doesn't help because we're not sticking around here. That's right. Um, we have a something bigger and better that we are going for. But, you know, back to the whole concept of death, Romans 5.12. Okay. This is kind of switching gears again. Sure. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, mm -hmm. and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, um, I've sinned, you've sinned, you've sinned, and we don't really have any other option. <laughs> we are condemned mm -hmm. to die. We are. There's also this passage found in Ecclesiastes 9 that helps oh. us understand this concept of death. Okay. Um, and it's found in verse 5. So Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5, where it says, For the living know that they will die, mm. but the dead know nothing. nothing. And they have no reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love, their hatred, which are some interesting concepts. Yeah, Think about emotions. Yeah. yeah, those are things that people, even science today can't explain. Yeah. They, they, they understand that, okay, we have these living cells, but how is it that they, they can, can hate or love? Correct. And, and so this is, this is so cool that Ecclesiastes already talks about this. So their love, their hatred, their envy have now perished. Nevermore will they have a share in anything done under the sun yeah. it's it's final it's yeah. over if you're gonna do something do it while you're still alive <laughs> you, you, you talk you hear about all these people who have regrets yeah you know if you go interview people at nursing homes or different okay. things like that what do you wish you mm. had done or mm -hmm. what's your advice to someone my age or something yes, like that yes. and 
unfortunately you just hear a lot of regrets mm. a lot of this at the time you're like I wish I had done this or I wish I had done that or if you can do such and such um, but um, there's the whole concept of living each day as if it's your last that's right because yeah you can follow out the, all the prophecies and oh yeah Jesus is coming and he's coming soon but then we live our daily lives like, you know, it's at least a couple years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can see the, based on eschatology and prophecy, I can see that, yeah, it's, it wouldn't be tomorrow. But yes, it could be tomorrow because you get in a car accident, that's mm-hmm. your time is over. I, I, I heard someone say something really cool like this, like okay. live your life as if it were today was your last day. So live your life as if today were your last day, but plan as if you still had a thousand years before you. <laughs> and, and, and I think that's, that's, that's important. Um, hmm. if, if, if I, for whatever reason, thought my life is going to end tomorrow, my plans would be cut short. I would not think of anything else yeah because then you work on the micro so it's if you if you plan only today as if this is your last day you're only working in the micro Uh but you want to plan for the macro as well as well and you know if things don't work out um that's okay it's all right (laughs) it's all right well (laughs) yeah there was a better plan there is a better plan okay so romans 323 Mm -hmm. it's uh another well-known text uh, for all have sinned mm. and come short of the glory of God. Another text you can look up is, you know, Romans uh, 3, 9 to 18. It's a little bit longer. Okay. That kind of covers some of these aspects. But I want to transition. We talked a lot of the, <laughs> mm-hmm. a lot of these morbid texts and just kind of, you know, if there's no hope, like the lesson is hope, during through this if there's no hope you can look at these texts as doom texts mm-hmm. you know, we're all gonna die <laughs> but John 6 40 John 6 40 and I think that's probably something that I think everyone agrees on at least <laughs> From all religions, that death yeah. is real. Yep. They're, they're, it comes to everyone, regardless of of what they believe, think. Whether it's or, a stepping stone or whether correct, it's... Correct. Yeah. It's coming. It's coming to all. And and, and so that's that's clear. But as you mentioned, there's a solution to death. 640. John 640. 640. You want to read that? I'll be glad to read it. And it says, And this is the will of him who sent me that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life, and I will raise Him up at the last day." That is powerful. Yeah. Um, This week I was um, driving. Um, I was on a work trip, and um, sometimes I put on the uh, Bible reading yes. stuff and I'll just start reading through and it was uh, I think I believe in Luke mm-hmm. and kind of during the Passion Week and there was that that little bit of vignetting of beauty in that process the whole process is beautiful but the actual crucifixion is pretty mm-hmm. horrific it is um, but there's that that moment of that spark and gleam of hope when there's the two um, individuals on either side Mm -hmm. and uh you know one just curses him out and is like this is dumb everything is horrible the other guy's like why are you doing this do you Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i guess he through his experience even if he was a really bad guy uh knew something and he had observed something and maybe he just fell off the path at some point and he didn't really mean to go mm-hmm. so bad but that's how he ended up and he's on the cross dying and uh, Jesus gives him the opportunity of salvation Amen. when he says um, you know 
He's like, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus is like, I'm telling you today, you're going to be with me in paradise. Amen. Amen. Um, so, John 640 mm -hmm. it just reminded me of that situation because um, everyone that sees the Son and believes on Him may have everlasting life. Um, sometimes, you know, we get caught up in all these various um, rules and different things like that. And it's, it's good to have the foundation to understand everything. But sometimes we forget the simple act of believing. Mm -hmm. um, theology, uh, foundation, core doctrines, that's all um, super necessary. But if you don't believe, mm -hmm. you, can, you can know all the doctrines inside and out. You can know all the prophecies inside and out. But if you don't have that belief within you and surrender and accept that free gift you're as lost as the worst guy uh, cursing out Jesus on the cross and so it, it's it's like the it's, it's the complete picture that we have to look and at. and what's beautiful about this text also is, is this this concept of resurrection um, yeah it, it's 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 I don't think there's any other religion I might be wrong but I don't think there's any other religion outside of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam that believes in the resurrection. Hmm, okay. That, that is a, 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 and it's a biblical concept. That's why these religions believe in it. Yeah. Um, and if you go to the book of Acts, the message of the first Christians of the early church was Jesus rose from the dead. Mm. And resurrection is our hope is our our hope for life and our hope for glory when this corruptible will be changed into something incorruptible and and i find also even in the symbolism of of um baptism which is so important to christianity this the concept is that you die in this watery grave and then you rise up to newness of life so even there Mm -hmm. it's, it just tells us, you know, there is hope if we believe in Jesus. So there's the aspect of not getting bogged down in that burden of sin and guilt. Amen. Amen. Um, you need to take those steps. Um, you could talk to the pastor, email the pastor if you're going through challenges. But Christ is there to forgive Amen. and to help you put those things behind you. Um, uh, we, a lot of times we, we meet people and they're like, well, can God really forgive because X, Y, Z? And they come up with a whole um, list of reasons why, you know, I, I, I left back when I was a teenager, now I'm in my 40s or whatever. And how can God, you know, but there is forgiveness for everyone. And, and what I've noticed is that those who have this peace, that knowing that their relationship with God is good, mm -hmm. in the sense that their sins have been forgiven, that they've confessed everything to God, um, you know, they face death differently. Mm -hmm. They face death with, with peace, with serenity, with hope, and those who, for whatever reason, have decided, and that's a choice that God gives us all, as we've um, studied this quarter, we have free will, a choice to believe in God, to accept what He has given us, or reject it. Um, those who've rejected it, they, they, they don't have much to look forward to. They, mm. They're just like, wow, death is scary. Death is something that, you know, makes them even uncomfortable. To talk about and not that it's the most beautiful topic to talk about but oh, and I think sometimes that's why a lot of times you have these deathbed confessions mm. or they want to get something off their chest just mm. before they pass away mm. um, it can be a scary thing if you don't have that peace um, but 
the peace of God passes all understanding and Amen. it can be with you. So, you know, if you're struggling every night when you go to bed, uh, like something's bugging you, mm -hmm. again, feel free to reach out. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk to the pastor and we can help you find resources. But it, it's also a beautiful thing when you know, a faithful member passes away. Yes, it is. Um, we miss them and their energy, their happiness, mm. their positivity. Mm. But, you know, I can just think of this past week. Mm -hmm. But, um,. I'm thankful because the next time we see them, <laughs> they'll be we'll, smiling. We'll, yeah, it's <laughs> no. gonna, just to see the new body, Amen. And the new creation, Amen. Um, will be fantastic. It will. And you know, we can shed a tear now, mm -hmm. and it is sad for us because we have to keep going. But um, you know, let's. I just mm -hmm. want to cover a couple other things here in that concept mm -hmm. because. We have this this concept of sleep. Yes. So let's cover that just a little bit more here. Mm -hmm. In uh, and, and you brought up the Ecclesiastes yes. uh, verse already, but just a couple of other verses here mm -hmm. to back up that one. Um, Psalms one fifteen seventeen. That's says, a good one. The dead praise not the Lord, Correct. neither any that go down into silence, which mm -hmm. is weird if mm -hmm. you are expecting it to, you know, <laughs> I'm going to die and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Would you go to heaven and not praise the Lord? It's just a weird um, mm -hmm. concept there. Mm -hmm. Psalms 146, verse 146. 4. Do you want to read that I one? I can read that. 146, verse 4. And it says, his spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that day, his plans perish. Please, another verse from Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 9, 10. Yes. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do, do it, it with thy might. Amen. And that's where people leave it a lot of times. Yes. Uh, but it continues, for there is no oh. work or device or knowledge nor wisdom in the grave, hmm. whither thou goest. <laughs> mm. You know, that verse would take it like so much farther if people included that. Because like yes. everyone's like, whatever you find to do, do with all your might. Mm -hmm. Because you're headed to the grave. That's right. And you can't that's do clear. anything. And um, that's, that's a, if that doesn't light a fire under you, I don't know <laughs> what will. But um, just some of these verses, um, especially that 115, you mm. know, the dead are not praising the Lord. Um, 146, which you read, um, the, the mental activities uh, perishing. Mm -hmm. um, jumping back to the New Testament. Sorry, I'm just mm -hmm. hitting a bunch of verses trying mm -hmm. to get in, these all in. But John 8, 51 and 52. says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Mm. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that you have a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets, and thou sayest, mm. If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. So what is this one about? Just, that, that's, a, that's, good. <laughs> that's a little tougher it's a, one. It's to a little tougher to one. So, so the Jews are actually saying, Hey, Jesus, you don't know what you're talking about. Because even people who believed in God, like our father <laughs> Abraham, can't. like Moses, they're dead. And, and what they're basically saying, they're in the grave. That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not living right now in heaven or in hell or anywhere else. They are dead. So at what point in time would that mean that they switch and start going to heaven? Mm -hmm. Because if that was just like the known... <laughs> mm -hmm. But what, what, do you, what do you see about the, what Jesus is saying here? Because he's like, he shall never see death. So, so I think that the, the idea here, maybe we could, we could refer it as the second death that is permanent. 
So eternal the Bible, death. eternal death. The, okay. the New Testament talks about death as a sleep. And that means that you can wake up from this death, this pause in time for those who have passed away. Um, they will rise up again. Now, there are two resurrections mentioned in the book of Revelation, which we're not necessarily talking about this on, in this week's lesson, but just to um, make reference to it. Some will rise up in the first resurrection, which is before the millennium, mm -hmm. and that's really good. Others will rise up a second time, which is after the millennium, which is really, which bad. Is really bad, because that is final. You know, they, they will be destroyed never again. So everyone, literally everyone has to, to life. everyone is going to have a second life. Everyone's going to have a second life. But it might be temporary. It might be temporary based on the choices we make today. And that's, you know, when the Holy City comes down, just as a, <laughs> so you don't have any mm -hmm. questions here. The Holy City comes down, the wicked who have risen up, yes. you know, surround the city and they're going to take it over. And then they want that to, yes. fire and brimstone comes down mm -hmm. and destroys, destroys them. And then the earth is recreated new. Correct. Colossians 3 verse 4 says, when Christ who is our life, shall appear. Then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mm, that's another promise. So you think about the dead in Christ. Yes. They close their eyes in death, and whether they're in the grave for five months or mm -hmm. 2,500 years, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, it's all the same to them. And the ne next thing they know, uh, Christ is returning. Amen. And um, that's a comfort for many because if you know certain people who were alive maybe 20 years could see what was going on now wow it would be very discouraging it would and maybe some of the choices that their family members have made mm. would be a very sad thing correct but just on the on the note of sleeping i said i was going to get to that but we have a couple different verses here um uh, Genesis 25, 8. If you want to go to 2 Samuel 7, I'll 12. Go, I'll go to 2 Samuel 2. Uh, oh. Genesis 25, verse 8 says, Then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age, mm. an old man and full of years, and he was gathered to his people. Yes. What does 2 Samuel 7, 12 say? Something similar. When your days are fulfilled and you rest with your fathers, I will set up your seat after you who will come from your body and I will establish his kingdom. So talking about um, a covenant that God made with David mm -hmm. and God said, David, you will die and you will rest with your fathers. So um, 1 Kings uh, 2.10, if you want to go to 1 Kings 22.40. Okay. Just a couple of other um, verses References. talking about when they're passing away, sleeping. Mm -hmm. uh, 1 Kings 2.10. So David slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David. And 1 Kings 22.40. 22, that is... So the Old Testament is basically expressing in different ways mm -hmm. um, the ideas of death and burial. So Ahab, even a wicked king, rested with his fathers. Then Ahaziah, his son, reigned in his place. So both the good and the wicked, they all go yeah. to the same place to rest with so, their fathers. Yeah, in 2 Kings 24 or 6, Jehoiakim slept with his fathers, and Jehoiakim, his son, or Jehoiachin, there's so many Jehoiakim, yeah, <laughs> uh, reigned in his stead. In 2 Chronicles 32, uh, 33, and Hezekiah slept with his fathers and was buried uh, him in the chiefest of the sepulchres of the son of David. And all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem did him honor at his death, and Manasseh his son reigned at his stead. So you have, again, good kings, bad kings, everyone goes to sleep. And, and even today we use that term um, when, when, we, when we say, you know, rest in. Peace. Peace. It's the same idea. You know, where, where do the dead go to rest? It's this graveyard, you know? Mm -hmm. or, or some, you know, we do different things, but, but most 
of us understand the concept of resting in peace means the person is dead. Um, I want to just read in closing Revelation 27 through 15. It was just a nice mm. uh, close to this lesson. I'm mm. going to read a quick quote before here, though. It says, uh, Nowhere in the sacred scriptures is mm. found the statement that the righteous go to their reward or the wicked to their punishment at death. Mm. The patriarchs and prophets have left no such assurance. Christ and his apostles have given no hint of it. Mm -hmm. The Bible clearly teaches that the dead do not immediately go to heaven. They are represented as sleeping until the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Now let's just uh, kind of read, I'm going to read the odd verses, you read the even verses, and okay. we'll just kind of conclude this, uh, this study this morning. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured him, uh, devoured them. Now this is, again, what we were just talking mm -hmm. about here um, just a moment ago, where the city comes down, and, but yeah. And even the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. And pause here. Yes. That's the eternal death. That is the eternal death. The eternal sleep. And eternal sleep, correct. Because they will be destroyed. Remember, it's, we're on the globe. The heavenly city has come down. Um, it would be weird to have heaven with everything constantly burning. Correct. That would not be Because heaven. the earth is getting renewed. Okay, so uh, 11. Then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, mm -hmm. from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. And the sea gave up its dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Death is a scary thing, but we have that app opportunity every single day to accept the free gift of salvation Amen. that will put us on the right side Amen. at the end of time. And what we pray for is for our names to be written in the book of life. life. And that is something that can be accomplished every time we come to Jesus. Amen. Yes. So join us next week for the next <laughs> lesson study. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the pastor. Pastor, could you close I'll be us, glad to uh, pray. with prayer? Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again for a beautiful day. We thank you that you are the giver of life. And Father, we thank you that you give us this gift through Jesus. And we thank you also for the forgiveness of our sins. We pray for all those who have lost a loved one. We pray that you will bring comfort to each one of their hearts. And above all, we ask for that hope, the hope, the blessed hope that Jesus is coming soon, and that our loved ones will be resurrected to remain in each one of our hearts, mm. knowing that death is just but a sleep Amen. from which you will wake us up on that glorious day. We ask your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take care and see you next week.